We're so excited that you decided to visit our YouTube channel. And make sure to click the subscribe button and hit that <laughs> notification bell ding, 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 <laughs> to keep up with all our new content. That's and we right. have it all the time. When you subscribe and hit the bell, hit the bell, Mama. Ding! All right. <laughs> You're helping us to continue to reach people and change lives right. one soul at a time. Now watch this message and be blessed. Don't forget, hit the ding. bell. Ding! <laughs> watch this now. If you got your Bibles, which I believe, or your iPads, whatever you use, go with us to the most famous scripture in the Bible, the book of St. John, chapter 3. I want to start reading with verse 16. And you see this scripture usually at football games, baseball games. You know, people talk about it a lot. I can quote it because it's so powerful. Yet all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable in every area. In John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved, so he didn't just love, he so loved the world. Notice the world. That he gave. See, when you love something, you give something. Love makes you a giver. That he gave his only begotten son. Let me stop there for a minute. The reason why we will never have this revolution that we had when Satan fell anymore, ever, because some people say, well, if it happened once, why can't it happen again? You know what I'm saying? Way back when. Because God only had one son. Can't sin no more. Now, we are a sons, but Jesus is the son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, now that's all of you in here, all of you watching on social media or wherever you're watching this today, because you in that whosoever, it's three words in one word. For whosoever believeth in him, not in Christianity. That's man-made. I don't think Jesus ever used that word. He came that you might know the Father. Now, Christianity is good, but what I'm saying is you have to make it personal and keep it personal all the days of your life. A relationship, a fellowship. That whosoever believeth in him, in him, which means the way to really believe in somebody, you got to know somebody. And how do you know somebody? You fellowship with somebody. And he says, should not perish. Didn't say would not, said it should not. But have everlasting life. Now that's where most Christians stay there. And that's great. But I want to go to verse 17. That's what I want to talk about. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Why are so many people condemned in church? Why? I want to talk today, keep that scripture up there, about condemnation, the sin of the church. I know a lot of people that would be here today, but the church wouldn't have them. See, don't try to clean the fish before you catch it. See, hey, that's, so that's the problem with religion. They try to clean the fish before they catch it. And what you do is hurt. How many people you know right now that have been hurt in the church? Hold your hand up if you know somebody been hurt in the church. Look at them people. And use it because that person didn't come up to that church or that person in the church's standard. You see, now Jesus says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now, why do you use the word might? Because the decision is yours. Now, I, I want to go to the next verse. Go to the next verse, uh, verse 18. Now, and hang on just a second, but you got to understand something. This church, if you understand the church or any ministry, we will not condemn you, but we will convict you. Because conviction does not make you feel bad. Conviction opens your eyes to the truth. So the word of God convicts, it doesn't condemn. I'm going to show you who condemns in just a minute. See, and when you're convicted of something, and we've mixed those two up so much over the years of religion, that we don't know the difference. Let me say, conviction does not make you feel bad. It opens your eyes to the truth. You go, whoa, I'm not going to do that no more. 
I'm finished with that. Where condemnation says you're never going to amount to anything. Satan going to beat you and bust you and stomp you. You're not much of nothing. And if you don't do what we say, you're going to hell. All kinds of crazy stuff. Now notice this verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. That's a big statement. But he that believeth, keep going, not is condemned already. So your belief is what either condemns you or not condemns you. Well, it doesn't condemn you per se as the belief, but know who is condemning you. is when you don't believe in the person that came so that you might be saved. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's why Jesus said the only way to the Father is through me. I mean, I'm not against Buddha. I'm not against them boys, but I want to tell you something. You're not going to get to God through them. Now, I don't care what Oprah Winfrey says. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good enough. And I like her. I've never met her, but I, she seemed like a very fine person. And she says, she, you know, she lives in her spirit. Well, okay, I agree with all that. But see, people, you, they don't seem to understand. They try to put you in a corner. So in other words, uh, you can't get to God through Buddha. You can't get to God through Muhammad. You can't get to, you see, they're trying to, well, let me help you. No. Now, you see, they, they, they call, oh, they're going to criticize that. Like as if you know. When you don't. You see, you're saying something you think you know. But when you understand that God, Christ in you, not on you, not around you, not about you, but in you, then you'll be able to speak like he speaks, think like he thinks, say what he says and does, do what he says to do. Now, I'm not being critical. I'm being truthful here. Because, you see, I'm trying to erase the Christianity part out of your head. I'm dealing with God Almighty here. You see, not the religion. Go to the next verse. I think it's verse 19, I believe it was. Can y'all do that? I want to put it on there. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. The reason why they like darkness, you can't see how bad they are. Go to the next verse. For everyone that doeth evil hateth, that's a big word there, hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Now, did you get that? Lest his deeds should be reproved in verse 21. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. I want to go back to verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. People get mad at me because I won't condemn them. Well, I want you to know that old boy's got a drinking problem. You got a mouth problem. Only thing you ever recognize is problems because you don't know no answers. I don't mean that to be rude. Listen to me. Keep the verse, keep the verse up there. I want him to see that again. For the God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, not them, or any other you might think, but through him might be saved. So if you're taking notes, write this down. This will help you. The gracious purpose of God in Christ is salvation, which means soundness. His divine purpose was not for vengeance, but mercy. I mean, he could take you out. But see, he, he said vengeance is mine because he knows how to use that. Most of us don't. Let me say that again. The gracious purpose of God in Christ is salvation. His divine purpose was not vengeance, but mercy. See, so I refuse to be vengeful. And yet I've been criticized for mercy. Because I know I can't change a soul. But the Christ in me can change everyone. And I won't do it through condemnation. Because that's what pushed me away from the church. 
Any of you ever had that problem? Hold your hand up, be honest. Look at this. Pushed you away. I didn't want to get around the church. I don't care what church, whether it was Catholic, Protestant, or Jewish. Because all they had was, well, I'll tell you what, boy, maybe one day you might get there. Be like me. I didn't want to be like you. See, that's condemnation. You see, it takes more energy to condemn than to lift up. Write that down. That'll help you. It takes more energy to condemn someone or who or whatever than to lift up. I was talking to a man one time not long ago, and he said, I have a drinking problem. I said, you know why you have it? He says, why? I said, because you just cleaned it. He said, I have. I'm not saying that the alcohol don't pull on your body. I'm not saying that. But see, you've, you've accepted that. And not willing to face. That's why AA always tells you to be honest, I'm an alcoholic. Well, okay, now what are we going to do about that? Because you went there to do something about that, not to just say it. So in other words, if you want the dog, you don't call the cat. <laughs> That's what a lot of people are doing. Let me say it again. It takes more energy to condemn than to lift up. See, write this down. Christ's effects were not destruction, but reformation. He didn't come to destroy. He came to reform. Not death, but life. Now, I have a hard time with people wanting to be delivered after they're saved. We need a deliverance service. What? Don't shout me down when I'm preaching. <laughs> see, well, people see, watch how condemnation gets into that. Man, I'm, I, I know I'm saved, but I'm like, oh, oh. that's the sin of the church. Well, we're going we're gonna, to we're, 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 we're gonna pray for you and hope to God this works. Shoot the dice. Come on, Jesus. Give me a seven. No snake eyes, Lord. We don't want no snake eyes. Don't tell me you don't know nothing about gambling. You see, when you were born again, your spirit was birthed in the light of God. Now, if your soul begins to act up, put it down. Be not conformed, be ye transformed. Use the power you have. Don't look for someone else to do it for you. And then tell the body to shut up. The reason why people lose weight on diets is because they tell the body to shut up. After a while, the body says, okay. But then after you think you got where you are, the same path you got to get fat, you start going down that path again. Well, guess what's at the end of the path? Fat. <laughs> but let me help everybody. If you like you, I like you. Ain't none of my business how big you are or how small you are. Let me say this again. Christ's effects were not destruction, but reformation, not death, but life. Romans 8 verse 1. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Romans said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in. Not around, not on, but in Christ Jesus. That's Romans 8 verse 1. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Free from the law of sin and death. Watch this. Before I was born again, I drank a fifth of whiskey a day. I got up in the morning, ate eggs and, and a sand, a, a, a bacon and a glass of scotch or bourbon. I started out. And I drank that fifth during that day. Then I, then I started drinking that night. After a while, I got kind of pickled. When I got born again, I came back to the state of Louisiana. I had no want for liquor. Jesus. Now watch this. I went to a church. Great pastor, great guy. Wonderful. He said, I heard you really was a heavy drinker. I said, yes, I was. But old things have passed away. Amen. He said, well, Brother Jesse, don't get around that booze too much. Because it liable to get you. My God, I hadn't been in his church one day, and he's already condemning me. 
It wasn't his fault. He's taught that way. I said, but I have been renewed. Old things have passed away, Pastor. Behold, all things become new. I'm looking for new stuff, not old stuff. It took me three years to get that guy to understand what I was saying. Well, you mean you've never had a temptation? I didn't say that. One time I was driving my car in, on I-35 in Dallas, going out of, toward Denton, uh, that area. And there was a big billboard sign. Uh, and it was, uh, it was liquor. And, and I looked at it, and my body did this. I said, shut up. He went, okay. You have no right. You're not in control no more. I refuse what I saw to condemn me into going back into that. Because I have had reformation. You see, write this down. He is better than we think and more gracious than we expect. You see. So that's why we will never condemn you. We will use the word of God to convict and the Holy Ghost does that. Then if you ask us, then we will tell you, but we will never say, you're never going to amount to this or never amount to that. No, no. You see, but that's why a lot of people don't go to church no more. They can barely stand Christmas and Easter. You see what I'm saying? But when you understand he's better than we think and more gracious than we expect in every area of our lives. So I have many opportunities to fail. I just don't take any. I mean, I can't. I mean, I'm in the world, but I'm not of it, see? So since I'm not of it, then I don't want what the world has. I operate and function in its environment because I have a physical body. But I tell my body what to do instead of what it's telling me to do. See, when you understand that, condemnation has hindered the church's fulfillment of its vision. See, condemnation has hindered the church's fulfillment of its vision. It's supposed to save the lost, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely receive, freely give. It's a school where you learn, blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out. But most people come in and feel guilty. It's like I heard a guy say, he said, some people come to church, they're sweating like a whore in church. Did I wake you up there, girl? Well, I heard this statement. I'm going to say it. Well, well, why is she sweating? Everybody else is sweating with her. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. See, sin is very condemning because you won't receive the light because you've been told you can't. And my God, if you get saved, get ready because the devil going to beat you, bust you, stomp you, kick you. But if you do it to the end, you shall be saved. You know, the only reason people sin because they want to. They just yield to it. They just yield to it. I prefer not to yield to it. I'm not stronger than you are. I just read this. I, I won't yield. Why? Because of his word. I don't sin every day. That's another thing. I don't do that. I live in the grace of God, the mercy of God. I've all, we've all sinned, but we're not all sinners. You see, so I, when I, I named this church Covenant Church so that people would know that this is a home away from home where you won't feel bad. And if you've got a problem, we can help you to fix it, spiritual, physical, and financial. Instead of saying, boy, look how bad they are. You see, he is an almighty Savior by nature. By birth, by name, and by experience. I'm talking about Jesus. He is an almighty Savior by nature, by birth, by name, and by experience. Now, all that stuff is in you. You have his name. You have his nature. You have the ability to get someone saved through him. You have great experiences. So let your light shine. The other day I went to Cheesecake Factory and just went to the restaurant and this person, 
you know, you just smile all the time. I said, I got a lot to smile about. Oh, is something good happen today? I said, something good happen every day. I'm not looking for something bad to happen. I don't get up in the morning and go, I ain't walking out there, I'm going to die. <laughs> I ain't doing that Christmas. No, something good going to happen to you. Remember, old Roberts was criticized terribly for that. Something good. Now, if you something bad, boy, it's, you know, I, and I don't care what the world says because I'm not in their world. I'll show you how crazy they are. They ought to rejoice when somebody's blessed. So if they show you Shaq O'Neal's house, woo Superman. If they show you LeBron James' play, woo oh, look at that. Oh, but if they show you Jesse the Flanders' play, oh! <laughs> and some of y'all want to see my crib real bad. <laughs> I think that's what they call it. Is that right? Crib? Something I don't know for sure. Oh, it's okay. For everybody to be prosperous, except it's okay for Oprah to be a billionaire. I'm glad she is. A multi billionaire. Why can't I be? How do you know I'm not? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Do you see my point? You understand what I'm saying here? I don't condemn them because of their nice home and nice car or whatever they like. I won't do it to them. And I'm certainly not going to do it in church. See, he's the almighty savior by nature, by birth, because he came to help the world by name and by experience. Now, when you understand that, you'll understand this. His gift of life is conferred upon not the deserving or upon the fortunate but upon the believing. Amen. What changed me was believing. I believed Billy Graham's words. And I was changed inside and outside. And it wasn't five minutes after I'm walking down this major club with a guitar in my hand, hair like this, Went to the backstage, you hear down, down, and down, 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 mirror balls kicking like that, and people drink, whoa, you just go, feeling getting stronger, down, 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 that's what I was supposed to do, which I had done many times, but I didn't do that. I did, everybody in this place is going to hell. The drummer said, he's tripping, man. He got some bad dope. Get him. <laughs> I didn't realize I said it. It was one guy close. He went, we're going to hell, man. You know we're going to hell. <laughs> and the cocktail waitress brought me my typical scotch. And I had a malt cup, one of them stainless steel kind. And they'd pour them in the malt cup. I'd drink two or three of those a night. You know, people buy you drinks and stuff like that. And I went, I don't want anything. And I heard myself say, I can't believe I said that. <laughs> wow. That's the first time I ever turned down booze. What happened? Conviction. I'm not doing that no more. Boom. Now, I hadn't been taught anything, yet salvation is powerful enough to tell you to tell sin no. Amen. See what I'm saying? Thank God I, I, I got into the Word, start learning things. See, his gift of life is conferred, conferred excuse me, upon not the deserving or upon the, or upon the fortunate, but those that believe, upon the people that believe. So I just decided to believe it. I love my, my, my statement, believe the unbelievable, receive the impossible, because it's doable. You see, when you understand that, then you'll understand this, and I'll go over these points again. Right action is true thought realized in the doer of the person of truth. Be ye therefore doers of the word, not just hearers only, 
deceiving yourself. Why would you deceive yourself? You don't want to have the problem if you deceive yourself. It's like one man told me one time, I can't help myself. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. If you can hurt yourself, you can help yourself. It's just a decision. Some people decide to hurt themselves. Some people decide to bless themselves. You see what I'm saying? So when you understand that, then you'll understand that right action is true thought. I love that. Realized in the doer of truth. Now, how could a man, son of man, born 2,000 years before me, could change me? It almost seems absurd in the natural. It seems totally, completely absurd. But yet he did. Because you see, he's not dead, he liveth. I've had a lot of people come to the church and say, we feel so comfortable here. You should. We're not here to hurt you. We believe in discipline. Love in its purest form is discipline. I mean, nobody likes to discipline their children. If you do something wrong with you, we have an altar here. You can come kneel. You enjoy that, you know. I don't enjoy that. I enjoy blessing my daughter. I enjoy blessing my wife. I enjoy blessing my granddaughter. I enjoy blessing my staff. I enjoy those things. I do some wild things for my staff sometimes. Some, just, you know, I just walk in and they're all working. I said, I just think, I just go to the reception, hit the, hit the big button. What? I want everybody to hear me everywhere. Hit the big button. Okay, boys. I say, everybody go home. I never hear people go, oh, no, oh, no. We're going we're gonna to work here and suffer. All oh, here, da, 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 da. They slamming books down and out the door they go. And that's good. <laughs> They don't say, I'm not worth it. Uh-uh. See y'all Monday, okay? <laughs> you know what that is? Power. Used in a good way. Hmm. See, it was the right action. Kathy said, you know, Jesse, you don't have to shut the whole staff down if you want the day off. <laughs> and I, I put a Robert De Niro on it. You talking to me? I said, you talking to me? What? What? You talking to me? But the only way I can get her to leave the office is shut the whole office down. So <laughs> shout staff. Because <laughs> she'll stay there till, till hell freeze over. What Christ did contrasted by what he could have done. Let me say that again. What Christ did contrasted by what he could have done stands as a brilliant illustration of grace and a monument of love. He should have killed us all, but he didn't. Catches a woman in the act of adultery. He says, neither do I what? Oh, oh. Back in the Renaissance, they'd have, they'd have burned her at the stake. Neither do I condemn you. And then here comes the conviction. Go sin no in other words, you have the ability not to sin. One time he went to the well and he asked him, where's your husband? Uh, 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 you know, I, uh, he said, yeah, you've been with five or six of them. Now that woman had a revelation. She says, I believe you're a prophet. <laughs> All she wanted was, I don't have to go to that well and get some water out that, that, that thing. He said, if you knew who was talking to you. Hmm. What Christ did contrasted by what he could have done stands as a brilliant illustration of grace and a monument of love. You see, he who rejects Christ cannot benefit by Christ. You can't benefit if you reject him. His divine compassion has no limitation 
and no restriction. The reason why I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field, because he chose to do that for me. He has no, he has no limitation or restriction upon me in any way, shape, or form at all. Fact to the point, sometimes I go to ask him about something. He said, make a decision and I'll back it. That doesn't mean he doesn't have time to answer me. No. Just make a decision, Jesse, I'll back it. I'm with you. The Lord gave someone a, a, a personal word in the line. And the Lord gave me that one time. He said, I find no fault in you. That's a wonderful statement. Now, you know what? If I look at me, Lord. Well, you know, did you see what I got over here? What I, got over? I find no fault in you. That's a wonderful statement. That's the son of God setting people free. Now, when the religious guys show up, Pharisee, sad, you see. Sad, you see. They got their fingers pointing. when they ought to be pointing at themselves. He who rejects Christ cannot benefit by Christ. His divine compassion has no limitation and no restriction. None. So I live a very free life. We had a wonderful thing happen the other day. We preached a funeral. Ron Fortune was with me. Ron told me, gave me a great call. He said, that's the best feeling I've been in my life. That's what you said. Am I correct, Ron? You said that. One of our great employees went home to be with the Lord Friday. Yeah, Dale Dufresne. His wife works for me, Denise. How can you say it was such a Oh, I did some things I'd never done in a funeral before. And we went there, and he, uh, he was cremated. And he was a very big man. And I got to thinking, I bet, I bet he's telling God, you got to get me out that jaw. Things are a little tight. <laughs> a little tight here, you know. <laughs> Kathy did the serve, did the, uh, the, the thing, then turned it over to me and things of that nature. Anyway, to make a long story short, um, I saw his biological family. They were there, you know. And there was a, a right round of heaviness in the room. But he ain't heavy. He's my brother. So you think I'm going to let heaviness stay when I have the ability to get rid of it? I'm not going to come up and say, with deeper sympathy. I'm on your loss. That means you're dead, man. <laughs> so I began to speak. Then I asked all the staff that had come. I said, I want all the staff to come. Come, come stand by his urn. And they all came in there. And I mean, they were kind of packed in there. I said, I want all you, his family here. This is Dale's extended family. This is us. We love him as much as you love him. And the reason why it was so easy, because I knew where it was. And he wasn't in that jar. First, he couldn't fit in that jar. And God got a great guy who was never late, worked for me for 21 years, always early, smart as a whip. I mean, a, a smart. And he was the only man in the finance department. And I used to tell him, I'm praying for you. He said, I need prayer with these women. <laughs> the only man. And now everybody loved him. Bless him. Very unassuming. Kind. Just whatever. It was wonderful. And when we got out of it, Ron said, boy, you lifted that heaven as you cracked that, you busted that to pieces. Why? Because he's more alive now than he ever was. Yeah. I dealt with the grief. I dealt with the sorrow. You got to deal with those things. I didn't say, well, you know, get rid of this stuff or not. Oh, it's going to be rough. Yeah, you know, you have to grieve. That's a psychiatrist and a psychologist that knows nothing about spiritual things. When the Bible said Jesus bore your grief. 
and he took your sorrow. Well, if he did, why am I going to carry it? Which brings us to this point. His truth brings us into the liberty of a loving heart and a gracious life. His truth brings us into the liberty of a loving heart and of a gracious life. So when you see that, I came to bring joy, to take out sorrow. And people came up to me and said, oh, you did such a good job. I said, I really didn't. I just did what Jesus would do. That's all I did. That's all I did. It, I actually, you know, I was just a vessel God used, but it really wasn't me, it was him. Just want to be a blessing to somebody in a time when they need it the most. Do you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. And when you understand that, you don't go slap crazy at these things, especially if you know somebody's saved. Well, what happened, Brother Jesse? When you preach a funeral, somebody's not saved. They're quick. I never mentioned. I never go there because that would be a judgment because you never know what people can do in a split second. One thief on a cross said, didn't even repent, didn't have time. He said, remember me. That's all it took. That's that monument of love, buddy. That's that uncompromised grace, boy. So let me go over this real quickly. The gracious purpose of God in Christ is salvation. His divine purpose was not vengeance, but mercy. Christ's effects were not destruction, but reformation. Not death, but life. He is better than we think and more gracious than we expect. He is an almighty savior by nature, by birth, by name, and by experience. His gift of life is conferred upon not the deserving or upon the fortunate, but upon the believing. Right action is true thought realized in the doer of truth. What Christ did contra contrasted by what he could have done stands as a brilliant illustration of grace and a monument of love. He who rejects Christ cannot benefit by Christ. His divine compassion has no limitation and no restriction. His truth brings us into the liberty of a loving heart and of a gracious life. It takes more energy to condemn than to lift up. Condemnation has hindered the church, the church's fulfillment of its vision. So when you go to church, you ought to walk out like this. Like coming out of a good restaurant when you're full. And there was no mistakes in your ordering. And the waiter or waitress remembered everything. You didn't want the onions and you didn't want the bell peppers. Yeah, you wanted extra sauce. We still can't figure out what you want yet you hadn't told us. I've had that happen to me many times. I said, well, I don't know what I want yet. I'll, I'll try to figure it out. <laughs> when I go to P.F. Chains, I make my own sauce. It's called a trio. Kevin Zadai loves it. <laughs> Am I right? He, just, he drinks it, man. <laughs> and the lady said, I can do that for you. No, you can't because you're going to make it your way. But I'm going to make it my way. And I'm going to make it a little, little kick to it. And I can tell sometimes when it hits Kevin a little hard, he goes, like a thoroughbred horse, his nose flares. Mm -hmm. That was a good one, Brother Jesse. <laughs> and 
And sometimes I hit it hard. I go, whew. Nothing can live in my colon. That's what a doctor told me. My God. You're a healthy man, sir. We just burn, baby. Just love it. I just like hot food and hot things, you know. I found out sometimes that they prescribe cayenne pepper. I don't know how it works, but it sure does. And one more thing. I went to a doctor not long ago to do that checkup stuff. It's the last one. I never need to go back anymore. It's called a colonoscopy. I've only had two in my life, and I will remember it for eternity. I sang Moon River quite often. Moon River. One was at 60. He said, we found no polyps. So that's what I was believing for. So I don't need to see you till you're 70. I said, I promise you, you will not see me until I'm 70. And the COVID came, so I couldn't see him <laughs> at 70. <laughs> and 71. But finally, he called. I said, he remembered? <laughs> yes. He said, if we don't find anything, you'll never have to come back. I said, okay. <laughs> so the nurse comes in, looks at me, said, I need some information since you've been gone almost 11 years. <laughs> so I told her, and everything she asked me, I said, no. About this, about that, you know. No, no. She looked at me and went, finally, a healthy one. I said, what did you say? She said, finally, a healthy one. Most people, they, 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 you know, they check off so much. I said, well, the Lord has been gracious to me. He would never do me what this doctor's about ready to do. And the doctor said, I'm sorry. I said, I pardon you. <laughs> well, went through that thing. I didn't know it. Could boy to give you a shot. And the next thing you know, you, uh, we're going in there. You already finished. I went, whoa. He said, well, no polyps, no nothing. Clean. I said, remember me. Because thou shall never see me again. <laughs> Ever. Unless you go to heaven. And I walked out of there. And I said, thank you, Lord. What a blessing you are. You see, even when he didn't do it, he didn't try to condemn me. You know, because of your age, you know, people, he didn't do any of that. He could have. But he didn't. I think he was believing with me for a good result. I really do. I said, Doc, how can you do this? How can you do this? He said, when you get your bill, you will know how I did this. <laughs> I said, oh, yes, I understand. Woo, that's a big bill. <laughs> you know? It's amazing. You know, yeah. So I wanted to make this as light as I could because I could have got real hard with this sermon. Because it's a sin in the church where they condemn people constantly. Yes. When they should never do that. Yes. What you should do is lift people up. Amen. Say, if you need some help along the way, I'm here for you. Amen. We're here to, do, to be a blessing. Yes. And, uh, and if we find out you did something God offered, well, we'll just, we'll tell you one little word, repent, and we'll go from there. And we'll find nothing but happiness in life, happiness in church. So I like it when people say, boy, it's good at church today. But you know what? You said some things that really hit me hard, but it made me change. See, church is a school where you learn. See? 
and, and, and then you can walk out saying, this is the day the Lord hath made. I shall rejoice and I shall be glad in it. Give Jesus a hand clap for that. Did you enjoy that? Very simple. But I know many people will walk out of church like this today. Oh, man. You know, I just can't do this. I might as well just quit going. Killed any kind of hope they had. I have shut down that generation of curse so many times by a simple statement. Make a generational choice. I don't deny that's in your family, but make a choice not for it to happen to you. And it'll work for you not some of the time, but all the time. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.